Awesome. Wonderful. It is another Monday, and you are with us on today's Women COP USA Radio. I bring you greetings from the motherland, all the way from Ghana today. And you know, we're going to have a wonderful time. We're about to continue our discussion that we had last week. It was very profound. I have, as usual, my wonderful mothers here with me, and we're about to have this fabulous discussion. As always, First Lady Henrietta Cassie, First Lady of Tennessee District, married to Reverend Benjamin Cassie, a mother. She has all these wonderful children and the beautiful Jenna Nicole Cousy, one lady among young boys. And also First Lady Henrietta loves women, Sunday school children and youth empowerment issues. First Lady Henrietta, the host for today is today's woman and you're welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here with you all. God bless you. God bless you. Out to Canada and we come back to the USA. I have my beautiful mommy and today she's all elegant traditional. I love your necklace, mommy. <laughs> we have Moa Devi Engman. She is the wife of Apostle Daniel Engman. He's the area head of North York in Toronto, Canada. They have been former missionaries to Guyana in South America. Our mommy has a background in horticulture, also in herbal issues. And she has an early childhood education. That's where she has a degree from the Guilford University College. Our mother is a mother of three young men and also she has a granddaughter. Mama Debbie, we love you. You're welcome always to today's woman. Thank you so very much. I love you too. And I'm, as usual, I'm so honored to be here today. God bless you. God bless you, mommy. And back to the US we come. We have our Mama Margaret. Mama Margaret Ofori is the regional first lady for Ohio region. She's married to Apostle John Ofori. He is the Ohio regional head and the USA COP national secretary. Our mother has a background as an educator. She's uh, writing her book right now and it's all about nutrition and wellness. Our mother is an author as well. And Mama Margaret and Apostle are together in Ohio are also in charge of, you know, so many things in that area. But our mother has worked as a social worker, an author, and Mommy's book is in the pipeline. Mama Margaret Ofori, you're looking beautiful. You're welcome again to today's woman. Thank you very much for bringing me on board. It's always a pleasure. God bless you. And you are looking cool in Ghana. Thank you, mommy. We are in mourning. Thank you. Thank you, mommy. And back to Ghana. Today I'm in Ghana with my mothers. And we have Momo Doris. Momo, you are looking flamboyant today. That thing, <laughs> right? That looks so beautiful. Momo Doris Otunyako is married to Apostle Lawrence Otunyako. And he's the FAD, Financial Administrative Director of the church. Also, our mother and Apostle are in Bikianan Temple in Accra now. They have six children, three young men, three young women. And also, our mother has professionally worked as a lecturer at the Kumasi uh, K Poly, now Kumasi uh, Technical University. Her mommy loves women empowerment issues, and three times she's been the host of Women on Fire Conference. And you know, last night, mommy, I had my surprise. I, we had a visitor here, and here comes, I don't know, lots of Voltaic water. And Mama says, well, you are in Ghana, so this is Voltaic water. I said, Mommy, that is like water to last me for a whole year. So thank you. And I've also Dennis uh, Nuchiga was, uh, Pastor Dennis Nuchiga was who came and Mama Martha, I want to salute you. I want to salute all the people in Kumase and all the people in Accra. Mama Doris, that was so sweet and kind of you. And I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome to today's woman. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you are welcome to my hometown. I hope they are treating you good. Fabulously good. <laughs> Thank you, Mommy. <laughs> God bless you. And I'm to Accra. Mommy Dearest, she says she wants to be 18 so she can vote. So today is all about sweet 16 and no, she's 18 because Mommy says I ought to vote. And Mommy, you are looking fly in your colors. It's like, this is really sweet 18. <laughs> we have our Mama Dr. Mrs. Abigail Che. She is 
a, the Department of Nursing Faculty Head and midwifery at the Pentecost University on the national sphere in Ghana. A mother, Dr. Mrs. Abigoche, is the president of the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. And also, Amami has been married for over 37 years to her sweetheart. Today, we'll add that to air. And for us, <laughs> Professor Lisa Hiniche, he's a retired area head of the Church of Pentecost in Winneba. And together, they have blessed with five children and four grandchildren. Dr. Mrs. Che, Mama Abigail, we love you. And Mama Abigail, you know, when I was talking to her, I said, I'm in Ghana. I'm not sure I can be on today's woman. And she and Mama Doris went to a lot to make sure that you see me here. So mommy, love to you. Thank you and you're welcome again to today's woman. Mommy, please, you are muted. Thank you very much and we thank God for keeping you safe and making you very Ghanaian again. <laughs> <laughs> I like your hairstyle because it Thank shows you. that you are back in Ghana. <laughs> I will show it all. Yes, mommy, and it's free. <laughs> Elvis Sylvester here. We salute you. All our today's world people, we salute you. Like us, love us, share, and we appreciate you all. Mama Margaret Ofori, my regional, Mama Margaret Apia, my regional mama, thank you. You are always sharing for us. So God bless you. We want to start the discussion and, you know, pivot back to how we ended last week. And first thing, Henrietta, I will let you go and, you know, you can start shooting off the questions. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Today we have an exciting question. Like our mother said, we're continuing from last week. Last week we um, touched on uh, on the surface on dimensions of unshackled and shackled. And here we're going to um, continue where we left off. Now, last week we started off and, and touched on um, scopes of being shackled, spiritual and also mental um, shackles. And today we want to talk about, um, we have a question and I'm going to throw it to our mother, Abigail, because we like to begin with her as always, um, about racial shackles. And just to add racial, we can add cultural shackles to that as well. And what are its impacts in the lives of um, believers? So mommy Abigail, please, if you can tackle that question for us as we begin this wonderful discussion. Thank you very much. And um, I want to take this opportunity to wish my grandson a happy birthday. He slips today, celebrating oh. it with his cousins and his um, only sister. And I, oh. I don't know how he will get this message across, but I guess his mom will <laughs> tell him. So, um, happy birthday. <laughs> um, yes, racial tackle. I think when we talk about racial shackles, we are talking about racism and what we have allowed racism to do to us. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying what we have allowed racism to do to us because racism has been there since time immemorial, but it depends on how you look at it for it to affect you. Um, yes, we look back into history and then we realize that our grandparents um, went through a lot of issues we don't want to get there with how they went, what happened along the line, but it just has come to our turn now where all those past things have had an impact on how our race has grown. Mm -hmm. Now, how we accept it or how we work on it is what is going to make the difference. Um, by God's grace, I studied in the United States of America at the time. And I remember at that time, I met some black Americans and in conversation with them, I was like, okay, I am coming from a place where we are the majority. Right. And you are in a place where you are the minority. Mm -hmm. Well, we are the majority, we are queens and princesses and we are royals. I mean, everybody, every African is a royal. When you trace back, you find our royal home. Right. We yeah. are the, ancestors, uh, the descendants of one chief or the other. So all of us are royals living here. And so we have to carry ourselves that way. 
So if for any reason part of us have been carried away to another country and now they are the minority, how do you accept it and how do you carry yourself about? That is what is going to determine. Because once a royal, always a royal. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how they treat you. When you have it in you that you are a royal, you carry yourself aside. Unfortunately, most um, the, this racial shackles have come about with us believing that because we have been, um, we were enslaved and we went through all the challenges and the terrible things, which of course were not the right thing. Because of that, we have, become, we have made ourselves victims. Mm -hmm. And when we make ourselves victims, then the moment you start playing victim, you become a victim. Right. But when right. you know that by God's grace, we have all been redeemed by the blood of Christ, and therefore there is no bondage, and we stand on that one, we are going to get ourselves unshackled and take that um, victim mentality off. Because you see, when, when we were talking about um, shackles the other time last week, we realized that one of the things that, one of the devastating aspects of getting shackled is mental shackles. Right. When, when you accept it mentally and make yourself a victim, then you stay a victim. So I believe that um, when it comes to racial shackles, it depends on the mentality. I have met a lot of people coming from our race who are in the minority in other countries who have told themselves that, no, we are not going to accept this. We are also capable. By God's grace, we are high up there. We are human beings. And because of that, we can do whatever Christ wants us to do. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And they have made it. So I believe that when it comes to racial shackles, it's a lot to do with the mental acceptance or rejection of it that makes us victims or not victims. God bless you. God bless you. Well, go to Mommy Doris um, in regards to the racial shackles and its impacts. If you'd like to touch on that for us as well, please. Okay. So as Mama Abby rightly said, the racial shackle is when um, a race, it can even be an ethnic group, thinks highly of herself and looks down upon other people, other tribes, other ethnic groups maybe somebody's color because of her color. It could be a black person thinking that because she's black, she has power over the white and the vice versa. The white people too, who say that's because they are white, they are superior. But in Christ, nobody is superior because in Genesis 1, the Bible states that God created all humanity in his image, irrespective of your color, your race, your ethnicity, you are all one. It is God's own way that he wanted others to be white and others to be yellow, others to be pink, others to be blue, others to be whatever he wants her to be. So the honors lies on you, the person who is being looked down upon to accept the fact that you are not inferior, you are superior, you are authentic, you are genuine, you are one. There is no other person who is called I am the only person and there won't be any other. All others may look like me, but they are not me. I am unique. Nobody should change who I am. And we should also know that God does not show discrimination. Romans 2.11. Even when um, he chose the Jews eh, and wanted us, the Gentiles, to come to be one with them, he, didn't, he is not going to discriminate. He's given us all the opportunities in Christ Jesus. So in Christ, we are one. So don't let anybody at all intimidate you with whatever thing that person has that you think is um, has an edge over you. So if you are living anywhere and somebody is threatening you because you are black, don't accept it. Or because you are white, don't accept it. Or because of your tribal background, don't accept it. Because if you read Leviticus 19.34, the Lord himself okay. says something. The foreigners residing among you must be treated as your native born. So if you have a, even a foreigner 
living amongst you, you dare not treat the person as a foreigner. And he went on to say, remember that you were also foreigners in Egypt and I am the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. So God as Christians, God is entreating us to even uh, treat foreigners as our own. And, and, and I don't want to be biased, but there is this tribe in Ghana, when you go to where they are, they have all, almost all the tribes in Ghana. They have this, 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 they have it because they've embraced everybody and they live at peace with them. So as Christians, we shouldn't discriminate based on anything at all. Then if you read Acts 17, 26, God says that, out of one man, he made all the nations mm -hmm. and that they should inhabit the whole earth. Out of one man, God made all of us, whether you are a Ghanaian, a Nigerian, a white, an American, Spanish, whoever you are, it is God who made you. And he made you for a purpose, not to discriminate, but to help your brothers. What can be some of the impacts? If you, are, if you allow, Mama B rightly said, if you allow those things that they do, the discrimination, the way they will reject you and the comments to get at you, it takes away your confidence. It takes away your call. You cannot be that confident to live the way God wants you to be. And you cannot even read the potential, your potential in life because always you will think that you are inferior. Always you will think that you are inferior. So instead of you, bringing out the good things you you sit down and say that, oh, as for me, they say, who said? All that other people are saying does not matter. What matters is what you are saying. And if you think you can make it, go mm. for it. If, if you cannot make it, fine. Mm. But if you think you have all that it takes, and it, 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 it breeds mm. fear and self-pity. Some people accept it and they live in fear, always, they don't have that boldness to go amongst people. So we pray that by this broadcast, if anybody mm. is going through any racial discrimination, especially our children who are living abroad and the sort of things mm. that they tell them when they go to school, we pray that God will give them the confidence that they will redefine who they are in Christ and maximize their potential and bring out the good in them. And once you do it, you get to where God called you to be. God bless us all. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. Oh, Margaret, I'm just going to come to you real quick. From what Mama Doris was saying, even as Mama Abigail started with us about racial you know, discrimination and talking to us about shackles, Mama Doris also built upon it. And even from listening to Mama Doris, I could see even she bringing it home to some tribes that embrace everybody. Mama Margaret, if you on a bigger umbrella, our mommy has narrated it to tribal, to things that make us inferior. If you can elaborate on that as well. Thank you very much. Yes, I think let us go to the Bible and see what the Bible says as believers. What does the Bible say about social uh, racial shackles? You see, as believers, in Micah 6, 8, it says, what does the Lord require of us to act justly and to love mercy? And then I go, when you go to Genesis 1, 26 to 27, it says, we have been created in the image of God, meaning God does not discriminate. We are all one. He has made us to be one, just like him, regardless of your color, where you are coming from, your background. So to add to what our mother said, we need to understand the, 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 very, the, um, the very bad aspect of uh, being, uh, of the social injustice, as you say. It is not good, it is not accepted. And this is a very serious mental disease that I think affects a lot of people in this world. And it starts with what? Prejudice. Mm -hmm. They see you as you are a different person. You are not human. You, you, you don't deserve certain privileges. And so they look down upon you and then they begin to discriminate what people do to you, what they, how they, they treat you. And it's very sad. So as believers, 
we must be aware of the fact that we have to demonstrate the love of God to others so that they can see the Christ in us. We should not discriminate. We should not look down upon people. We should embrace all races, all cultures, all ethnicities. It doesn't matter where they are coming from. We have to show the love of God to others and make them feel very comfortable. Because when you discriminate, there are so many negative impacts. Right. It makes the person feel very unloved, unwelcome. You feel that you are good for nothing. It makes you, I mean, people, you, 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 you look at yourself and you think, I cannot do anything. But mm -hmm. let me tell you, God has deposited in each of us. He's given us different giftings, abilities, talents, and we are all unique in our own special way. So if I'm not able to do this and you are doing this, does not mean that you are more superior than I am. In my own small way, I can also impact others. Mm -hmm. So this is what God wants us as believers. We must first go out there and demonstrate the love, the power of God out there so that people will see. Even in our churches sometimes, when you are not very careful and go there, you see some cliques, some groups, you don't belong to this class. I don't feel comfortable talking to you. And it's so <laughs> on and so on. So as Christians, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful. Mm. When even it comes to positions, sometimes you look at the one who is able to, who is very close to you, you, you know for sure this person cannot do this way. But because the person is close to you, you prefer to give the work. And in the, in the end, they cannot even do the work. So this is something that we have to consider it very critically. Sometimes it starts within the, our own churches. It goes out. Even in Ghana, for example, some of us who have made servants and other things, sometimes we think the maid servants cannot eat the food that our children are eating. They cannot put on the clothes our children are, are putting on. They cannot sleep where our children are. And where are we heading towards as believers? Mm -hmm. So it behooves on us as Christians to demonstrate the love of God outside, wherever we are, wherever we go. Let us learn to embrace all, to love all, show no partiality or discrimination, but rather mm -hmm. let us portray the Christ-like attitude so that people may know God through us. That is what I want to add. God bless you, Mommy. You said so much. And one thing that you said that I also I would like to throw to Mommy Debbie um, to elaborate on about the discrimination between classes. Um, and we talked to you, you, you touched on the racial discriminations and the different tribal discriminations as well. Um, there was a young lady that was in school and she was in a predominantly um, you know, Caucasian school, I would say. And they, they, the teacher, the one of the professors who she was in a class with, they demeaned her as if she wasn't even worthy enough to be in the school in which she was in, or as if she didn't have a future. And we see that a lot of these racial discriminations are very prominent, especially in America that we're in, because we are considered what minorities. And so um, even as we talk about the racial discriminations and mommy, uh, Margaret, as you talked about the classes, mommy Debbie, if you would like to uh, talk also or um, um, contribute to what we've talked about so far on the racial shackles. Okay, thank you so very much. And our mommies have really spoken on the subject. So the little I want to add, I will use one story. I went to school when I was going to the school in the UK, <laughs> something very funny happened. Um, one of the students came to me, she was Caucasian and, and she asked me, she said, oh, I heard African leaves on trees. And then I looked at her and I said, oh no. We Mommy don't live for real? Trees. Yeah. She said, oh no. my goodness. I just, oh, yeah, I said, no, we don't live on trees actually. You live on trees. She said, huh? I said, yeah, <laughs> because at the end of the day, our houses are built with cement. That's right. Our houses are built with wood. And because oh of that, we live on trees. We don't live on trees. You know, mm -hmm. but, but for me to have that confidence, to be able to answer her meant I know who I am. Right. Mm. A lot of the people, because of the shackles and the problems that have gone on, they don't know who they are. And because of that, like our mommy says, it weighs 
them down. It allows them to feel like I'm not good enough. And then they've said it over and over again, black is not beautiful, this and this and this. But today on Today's Woman, I want to just encourage and let everybody know. I mean, we are not discriminating between the races, right. but to let us know that the original person who was created was called Adam. And Adam, the meaning of Adam means Adama, which mm -hmm. means brown. Mm -hmm. The original person God created was brown because the person came from the earth. And out of the earth, the different colors have come in. So if somebody mm -hmm. was to boast, mm -hmm. if somebody was to say that, hey, I am the original, I am this, I am this, it should have been us. And sometimes if they know what you have, Right. They try to play with your mind so that you will feel inferior and then turn away from what you have. And then they mm -hmm. will go for it. Look at all the things we have in Africa. That first they will pretend, oh, it's not good enough to the extent that we Africans, our own medications, our own herbs, our own things that are good for us, our bodies. We believe, no, ours is not good enough. I went to mm -hmm. South America, Guyana, and I found out that they are using cassava Cassava is the basis where they put all medications in. They have planted plantations of cassava. And if I'm sure an African is using the cassava, they'll say, oh, cassava is poisonous. Cassava is not good. We should not use it. So it takes for us to be able to wise up. And then to do with those social classes where we ourselves discriminate against each other, we have to stop it. We seriously have to stop it. And then secondly, too, we have to try and understand what the Black Americans and the Guyanese and all those Caribbeans have gone through. Because when we went to Guyana, they expected from something from us. They felt we owed them because we are missionaries. Why? Because missionaries have done so many things against them originally. I heard of a story and I was so shocked that when the Blacks were running, um, they were told, uh, uh, that, that some of the white missionaries told them that, oh, the Blacks who are running, the Amerindians wanted to save them. They said, no, don't save them. If you save them, they will eat your children up. So what they were doing is that some of them who even had children with the Amerindians, they forced the Amerindians to, to kill, to strangle the babies. Mm. I mean, look at this. So there have been so many horrific things that have gone on, all to the extent that in Guyana, the, 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 it's the Indians and the Blacks. And the Indians feel they are superior to the mm -hmm. Blacks. I mean, uh, it, it's just a horrific. So if you are a Black, an Indian feels you are no good. When even I in the it. States, yeah, when you go into the store, I, here, even in Canada, when I go into the store, sometimes then they will say, code this. Why? Because they believe that as a Black person entering into the store, I'm going to steal. Wow. And because yes. I've worked in the Bay before, so as soon as they say it, I start laughing. I said, these people have <laughs> you know, so We are faced with so many things, but mm -hmm. we have to renew our mind. And like our mm -hmm. mommy said, look, we are in the church. And sometimes, unfortunately, these things also come up. We've got to stand. And when we do, it will affect everybody. And then it will make a change. Amen. Amen. Mama, I think you, you've left us with a lot that just calls for a sigh because it's so much that is just going through my mind, just listening to you. And these things are real. Like you go to the store and you see people coming right around you. Sometimes you can tell from the body language that this, you know, sense of we are in danger. Even sometimes I've seen experiences where in elevators, people want to join, but they see two, you know, of a certain race. And right there, it's like, yeah, please we, go, go ahead. Meanwhile, you push for the elevator to pause right there. So you just brought chains of things that are hard to say, but thank you, mommy for being just this blunt with us. You are with us on Today's Women's COP USA Radio. We have so many people, we just want to acknowledge our people, like us, love us, share. Today we are talking about very deep things and it's happening and we have to just unearth it. And I have Auntie Mary Chase Sarah. She says, we have been made in God's image. Powerful Mama Margaret, God bless you. We always need to remind ourselves in situations like that. More Mary Chase, God bless you for being here. The prophets in the house, Elder Professor 
requirement Katie a sergeant and today I was with his wife so mm -hmm. I, I spent some part of my day with uh, the professor's wife so Thank you so much uh, for, for being here as always. And we have so many comments that we are thankful that you are with here, with us here. And my dearest husband is on there. He says, thank you for the, for mommy, demonstrate the love of God. So mommy, he just loves what you said. The prof says, thank you mothers for talking about this topic. And I think mothers can help in talking to their children what they can do. So thank you prof, he says, the honors lies to mothers, Auntie Francis Campo, for you always here with us. We do appreciate you. And she says that you know, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am reading as she says first they give to you. They always think we live in the jungle. So, mommy, she's wanting to you really affirm what you said. First lady Rosemary, do God bless you for being here. And you know, talking about the jungle, I remember somebody approached me once and says, I hear that in Africa you guys talk to lion. I said, which lion? Lion? Uh, Excuse me, the lions I've seen, I've seen them in the zoo. So I'm thinking, I'm nobody but it's with lions, not even cats and ferocious animals. So there's so many wild assumptions out there. So mommy, she's agreeing with you about the jungle. Thank you so much. All of you who are with us, please share this link, invite somebody. Mama Abigail, before I hand over to First Lady Henrietta, I just wanted to come to you real quick. Even from what our mommy was saying about the discrimination and bringing it home to us. I wanted to hear your reaction to that, Mami, talking about racial discrimination, suspicions that are associated with certain specific races, expectations of misbehavior because of the skin of your color. And Mami, Debbie, talked to us about Adama, taking us back to the beginning. Mami, if you want to weigh in as well. Mama Abigail. Ma, please, you're muted. Sorry about that. As for discrimination, I believe it's um, part of human nature to look at things differently. We all look at things differently. And for it, sometimes it is good to discriminate in the sense that you know that this is how this works and this is how the other works. So this is how I should go about it. But it becomes an issue when you are looking down upon people or you are looking down upon races or you are looking down upon groups as has already been discussed by all of us. Now, for it to be addressed, you it depends on how you accept it. Mm -hmm. they, they say all kinds of things about us. We go into shops and that's why I always say that I love being in Ghana because as for Ghana, we are all black here. Or most of us are black. And so we are all, we are the same color. And right. we are not uh, fighting over colors. Although uh, even within our system, the fact that somebody like Ma gives you your color, you will be seen as some, somebody lighter. So um, and things like that. We say things that show that even we have accepted Mercy. the fact that certain colors are superior to our colors. But then, it depends, on, it depends on how we bring up ourselves and how we bring mm -hmm. up our children. I like what my mom said said uh, when she said, when we have to accept ourselves, mm -hmm. do we know what, who we are and what, what do we tell our children to do? You see, when we, we, we are bringing up the children, do we let them feel that a certain culture is inferior, a certain race is inferior, because the children come into the world all embracing, not knowing what is different from the other. They, it's, a, it's lovely to watch children playing around. They don't look at color. They are color blind and they are racial blind, they are cultural blind. But mm -hmm. we, the parents, are the ones who put ideas into their heads. And I remember watching a program in the US where one black child and one white child, they were in a class together, they had become friends and they were so glued to each other, they caused their parents to become friends because they didn't mm. even see the color difference and they helped them 
they, they grew up well together. Another thing is that when we look at our songs, especially those of you who are outside Ghana, what stories have you been telling your children about Ghana? <laughs> A lot of your children have ideas right. about Ghana being a place that you cannot come to. And I mean, I'm on several platforms, my two old um, year group platforms and those of my mates who are outside and they are always criticizing Ghana and Ghana is this and Ghana is that. I come to your side and I see the same things, sometimes even worse. Mm -hmm. And so what are we doing to ourselves? We are our own, we are the same people who are creating the, the issues for our children. So mm -hmm. then the ch mm -hmm. the, your, our children go up thinking that they are better off because of where they are or because of the color they, are, they have and things like that. So I think that it is, it is very important that the things that we have been asked, we do not pass it on to our children, but rather let's go to the Bible. Mm -hmm. And if we are mm -hmm. serving a God who is no respecter of persons, as we have already established, if we are serving a God who created all of us in his own image and who has potentials for all of us. When he says, I know the plans that I have for you, he doesn't say that I know the plans I have for the Asians and I know the plans that I have for the British and I know the plans that I have for the Ghanaians. No, that's not what he says. He mm -hmm. calls us individually and says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans of welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And that is what we should instill in our children. So yes. those of us who have grown in a system where we have come to meet the discrimination and we don't like it, let us not pass it on to our children. Mm -hmm. Let us teach them that the God that we sell, we said, is an all-loving God, an all-embracing God who accepts all of us and wants us to move on as a whole human being race to his glory and honor. It's always a joy when we meet as um, a church and the different cultures come together. I remember there was a, a pastors and wives conference in Ghana and the different, I mean, the chairman called the different tribes to come and sing their songs. And when one song comes, I mean, we all join in and we are happy about it. And it's so nice. It's so warm. It shows that there are cultural differences amongst us, but we have embraced each other and we are working together. And mm -hmm. I think that is what we should start with working towards. You see, the God that we serve, he is all-knowing and he knows our heart. He knows what is going on in our mind. We cannot um, be hypocritical with him mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he knows how we are and he knows what we are doing. So even if we are having problems within us, looking down upon some races, looking down upon such some content. It is just right for us to tell God, because of the orientation that I have had, because of how I was brought up, because of how I grew up, I have come to accept certain things and I look down upon certain things, certain people in a way that does not agree with you in your way. Please help me get over it because you have said that you have created me in your own image. And if you are a non-discriminating God, then it means that if I'm in your own image, I can also be non-discriminating. And if we start looking at it that way, it will help us and we'll be able to support each other. So I am hoping that through this medium, all of us will learn to be nice to each other, not just nice to each other, but also to let our children respect other differences. Mm -hmm. You see, I remember when I was working in Malawi, Malawi, Malawi they drive on the left. And in Ghana, we drive on the right. And we were driving somewhere, and then my children were in the car, and they said, Mommy, these people are not driving right. And I said, No, don't say they are not driving right. Say they are driving differently. Because they are driving on the other side of the road doesn't mean that we are not right. And we drive, we've just chosen one particular way, and they have chosen another particular way. So it's good for you to learn how to go with them when they are driving, because if you decide, I remember when I went at first, I'll be driving and I think I'm in Ghana and I'll be driving on the right side. And then I remember I got to a place and some gentlemen, they honked at me and then they followed my car to where I stopped. And they said, 
do you want to kill the children in your car? Because why are you driving in the opposite direction? I said, I'm sorry, I'm a foreigner. I, where I come from, we drive on the other side of the road. And that's why I'm driving on this side of the road. Then they understood and allowed me to go. So we have to learn to embrace that people do things differently. We may not be the same, but ultimately we will be working towards the grand star that God has planned for all of us. God bless you. Man. And you, when you were saying, you were talking, you said something about the color differences. And, you know, personally, growing up in a household where my sister was much fairer than me, you can tell that, you know, people sin, tend to say that she, you know, she, her beauty, she, oh, beauty, oh, beauty, oh, beauty. And I was like, we look just alike. <laughs> exactly. And so, that, you know, the racial, the racial shackles are there. But education, as you were saying, education, education, education. And as we go to our mother Doris to also um, bring in her contribution and as we shift over to how do we conquer these things? I know you talked a little bit about education. Um, our mother Debbie also talked about us knowing who we are. And so uh, mommy Doris, please, if you would like to add on and then also we will begin shifting on to how do we conquer these shackles, these racial shackles that we face day in and day out. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And th this topic is so interesting, you know, mm -hmm. very interesting because mm -hmm. human beings as we are, sometimes we don't accept the way we are. We mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. other people are always better than us. Mm -hmm. When somebody is slim, the person will say that, oh, I wish I would be a little fat. Oh. Those of us who are fat, <laughs> those, of us, those of us who are fat, we are also saying, oh, my wish I can be slim. Oh, so we go and do people. Then you sleep and you will be shaking. Then those of us who are short, we say that, oh, how I wish I would be a little tall. So you go and wear high heels that you cannot even control your legs. So human beings as we are. <laughs> I was watching the morning show in Ghana. And this lady, I don't know, I, I've never seen her before. But she said something that was so profound. I loved the whole day. And she said it in Chi. She said, Onyankupoa, Obo, and Mark Ram. Onim say, Yahuya, who makes it. But on a more serious note, I think mothers, we can do something about this racial discrimination, the way we, uh, Mama Abigail said something, when you give birth and maybe you have one who has a, a light skin, and the person maybe are pampering the red, you say, Me bro, ni. They say, Yeah, yeah, tun tun ni, yeah, yeah, memukra. Me, 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 you cannot say, you know, it has to be. So then the, the old bro, ni, because of <laughs> So that the, the, the one thing is that <laughs> when the, the person grows up, he want to lighten up. So you go and buy creams and you see, go to the market, the black market. You just be fair. All the bleaching things are for blacks. I have not seen any bleaching, lightening, no matter what we, 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 we put it. They are all for black people because we've been made to think that our color does not, is not good. Mm -hmm. But if you, you, our color is the best. I mean, that is what God, wherever God has placed you. As in at 17, I like at 17, he said, it is God who created the heaven said, and, and determines where people should right. stay. And he has said, yes, he has set boundaries. So if God knows that me, I have to stay in Africa, this is the color that is conducive for Africa. I should accept it and leave it as such. If I migrate in his own wisdom and I go and stay in the US, that doesn't give me the, uh, the chance that I want to lighten up my skin to be like the, the white person. You can never change your color. Mm -hmm. So be what God has called you to be. But one thing, that discrimination and all that social class and um, I'm better than this one, 
it's been transferred onto us, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe because even in, now let me zero into Africa. Even in Africa, no, you West Africa, West Africa. If you move from Ghana and you enter the borders of other countries, when you are a Ghanaian, I don't know, I don't know how it is, but you feel so superior. Mm. That it, and the people will make you to feel it. When they ask you, why are you coming from Ghana? Hey, Ghana, what is it about Ghana that people look up to us and think that we are superior? So you go in there having that mentality that you are superior than the people that you've gone to meet. That is where we have to be very, very careful as Christians. You know, because we have different cultures, different languages. When we get to Revelation, you know that God has said people from all ethnic groups. So God is embracing all of us. He's not only embracing Ashanti people. And I was so shocked just recently. I was talking to a friend and the friend said that, oh, um, this our friend is, I said, oh, this our friend is an Ashanti. He said, oh, one year Santi, one year Santi at Chimini. I'm saying, hey, so this thing too, I'm not sure, hey, I did for fra, I'm not sure why, yeah, Babeka. You know, so in our minds, we have been, I was so, that day, I said, hey, so you see, that time we have talked about this, so this is what is on her mind. So once she knows that this is not like 100% M block and this person is coming from here because she is, then she thinks, what? I don't think it is, it, is, it is important. Look, let's treat people as individuals. What the person is made up of, the good things that God has implanted in the person, that is what we should look out for and enjoy the person, whether the person is coming from the north, south, east, the west, northeast, or whatever. And one thing that I learned from missions that I want to talk about is that when God puts people at a particular place, the food that they eat there is because of their environment. So don't move from my country and go to Guinea-Bissau and go and say that you want to eat fufu. No, as for that place, even the plantain, when you plant it, it takes one year for you to get the plantain. So you'll be there and you never, and you want to force it on other people. When we go, we want to dominate them and change them and let them eat the food that we think mm -hmm. that is the right thing to eat. My people will travel and they will want to eat fufu and their children are laughing at them because their mommy is eating fufu. Sometimes some of these things are all the things that we have been built in with and we should gradually with the word of God be conscious of it and make do away with it so that we can embrace people. I went to a church, it's a Nigerian church and after, the, after church service, they all grouped and they started talking, you know. So I said, uh, so is that what we also do to people? Yeah, sorry, hey, if you are Uma, no, 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 then we leave the foreigners who come. But God is telling us that we shouldn't treat them as, as such. We should be conscious of it. People come into our midst, and sometimes we don't even talk to them. Mm -hmm. Nobody even will notice that there is a new person, and the person will just walk away. How can the person come back? Then we go as a Mumrana, Sonsha, Yehoah, even those who come, we cannot maintain them. So we should be conscious of these things. And how can we conquer them? How can we conquer some of these things that we've, we've, we've been through? And we have to believe in the word of God. Yes. Believe in the word of God that you are unique. You were created for a purpose. God has your back. Nobody is superior. I like Hussein Bolt for so many reasons because this a black guy from Jamaica, and he was not intimidated. Anytime he got on track, he made sure that the thing that is within him came out and he won and won and won. Every person has a potential. Just sharpen it and use it. If now we have COVID, if you are a black person and you have medicine for COVID, who wouldn't buy? Everybody will come and buy it. Everybody will come and buy it. So we shouldn't sit down, believe in yourself. We shouldn't settle for less because I'm from this tribe 
or because I'm, I'm just color. Don't settle for less. If the opportunities are there, use them and build up on yourself. Make good use of your skills. I, and, and once you make good use of your skills, people will come to you. Mm -hmm. I was listening to uh, uh, some documentary about the Israelites and when they moved to the current Israel where everybody wants to go, it was a forest. Mm -hmm. Stones and other things, desert that nobody will want to be there. But now look at them. The skills that they learned when they were under Egypt, the, 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 the hard work that they did turned their country into an envious country. When I went to Israel and I saw their uh, palm nuts plantation, whoa, very big. They have everything. L last I think CNN said that honey and milk is flowing there. Mm -hmm. But there were people that were being killed because their face is not correct. They are weak, they are feeble. They, are, they didn't allow those things to get at them. They believed in the God that has called them that he is able to do it. So if you are watching us and you are going through any form of a, a, a discrimination or you are under any shackle because somebody has said that you cannot do it, hey, rise up and pray to God. He gives strength and power. He can enable you to do it. If you are a student, and you are failing. Failure, you are not the first person to fail. So many people failed. But what they did with the failure is what has made them what they are today. Don't sit there and say, Media, yes, see me, see me, yes, I so you can do it. Sometimes our children to the right behind this thing and they take it as if they want, they don't want to do it. You can do it. Then so develop your talent and use it. Do not let the negative words get at you. No. Don't let the name, when they say the negative, you to say the positive because it's the same blood. I don't know, maybe the uh, um, Mama Abby and the nurses here will tell me. I know that if they are giving you infusion and it's a black person who, and they are O or O positive, whichever way you group it. Can you know that this blood is from a black person? <laughs> Mama Abby girl, can you know? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the beauty of the blood that you know that is all <laughs> that is all so the person who donated it you wouldn't know if the person is a black or a white person so in the same way once that blood runs through yeah. you and the people the person is achieving it you too you can achieve it so don't sit down and let all the negative things sometimes it is sheer laziness that we hide behind but i want to encourage all the young people and all of us to come up and do good because the Lord of hosts is with us. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Mommy Doris. We're going to uh, recognize some of our listeners and after that, we'll go to uh, Mommy Margaret to also um, weigh in on how we can conquer some of these racial shackles that we face in our lives. Um, we have our aunt, sister Francisco Ampofo, I think is so for Mommy Ampofo, your sister-in-law, I believe. Um, saying first lady gifty thank they always think we live in a jungle <laughs> it's so true um reverend ampofos also saying thank you mama eggman black is beautiful and i definitely agree i mean just look at my wife in ghana wow wow isn't she a beauty <laughs> come back quickly honey <laughs> From a distance. God bless you. <laughs> we have our mother, Monica Usu, also saying good afternoon, beautiful women of God. Good afternoon, Adiknes Monica. Um, the professor himself, um, he's saying, Mama Debbie, thank you. Adam came from the word Adama, meaning brown, brown earth. You are the best. God bless you, Elda. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mother uh, Mary Che also says, we need to educate these ignorant people because they don't know. Trust me, I've had the experience. Mama Debbie talking about it. Uh, God bless you. We have our big sis. Um, today's woman's big sis, Benedicta Bookman Ajays. This is sad. Mercy, Lord. It's very true. We have our uh, Sofane, Rosemary Adu, who is also on. God bless you for joining us. She says, praise the Lord, women of God. We have our Mami Brago also on. She's saying children aren't born to be racist. Racism is taught. Very, very true. Um, also, our mother Rosemary has, is saying it is unfortunate that in this age, racial discrimination still persists. 
and not forgetting about ethnic discrimination among Ghanaians. It is so true. We have um, uh, Elder and Ketia also saying, do we know who we are? Thank you, my Abby. I know who I am. What kind of story are you talking to, to your children? Good one. Some Ghanaians don't want to know um, to don't want to come to Ghana left alone bringing their children. It's very true. It's very true. God bless you. We also have our sister Nana Akosia Sampoma on. Um, we have um, our sister Mary Ami Amiyao as well. Greetings, wonderful women of God. Um, and we also have uh, our elder made another comment. Someone asked me jokingly whether I used to pick up cotton because I am too black. I told her no, I used to pick up cocoa under a shade. Mm -hmm. Not under a sun. This joke came from a person. No, who it's so true. It's so true. I remember growing up, even um, being labeled as an African American. You would see some Black Americans were like, "No, no, no, no. I'm not an African American. I'm a Black American." The fact that the African is there, they don't even want it to be attached. Um, but like we are all saying, education, education, education. God bless you all for listening. Please continue to share the link so it can be a blessing to someone else. Uh, Mommy Margaret, please, if you can also touch on, you know, as individuals who face these racial shackles, there are some people because of their color they have not been promoted in their workplaces. Oh. There are people who, because of their color, um, they people don't even want to associate themselves with each other. There are people who are even locked in their homes um, with everything that's been going on within the past year with all of these social injustices and racial injustices. People are even afraid to go outside um, in some places. So just you know, touching on how can we conquer this as people of God, as children of God in this time? Thank you very much. I think the Bible says in Ephesians that our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can even think of. And with God, all things are possible. You see, we are living in this world. and this world, there are certain things we cannot do without the help of God. You see, especially when you are in America, I mean, social injustice is all over the place. So it doesn't mean you have to go back to your country when the Lord has brought you here for a reason and for a purpose, but what can we do? God has given us wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Above all, the Holy Spirit is there to equip and to help us and to give us the needed boldness, the ability to work our way out through some of these challenges and to move forward. So I want to say, one, we have to depend, trust in the Lord for mercy, for direction, for stamina, and for grace to stand wherever you find yourself, especially your job places. Some jobs, when you go there and you are black, you will never be promoted. Mm. You have to work harder mm -hmm. and work your way up, 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 up before the Lord, before maybe the, the bosses or whatever maybe will consider you. But that, does, that should not even scare you. So far as Jesus is with you, make sure wherever you are working, leave your signature there. You see, for example, you know that here, there is racist all over. Mm -hmm. And being a black, you know that if you are not careful, they can fire you. So what do you have to do? One, go to work early. Mm. Know how you work ethics, how you do your work, while you do your work. Is very important. And she leaves something there so that when you are not there, they will feel the impact that Maggie is not here and therefore this work cannot be done. Leave your signature there so that when you are not there, they will feel your presence. They will be looking for you. Don't look down upon yourself. You see? And then also persist on your right. Mm. Know your right and persist on it. Don't accept what is out there. Know your rights. For example, learn more about your right to be free when you are living in a country like America and how the law, the law also protects you. There are certain things if you don't know, they'll always walk over you or you will never even receive it. So you have to learn the laws of the land and know your rights over there. It doesn't matter whether you're black or whatever, there are laws that protect us in the land. So learn it. I quite remember a couple of years ago 
my little girl was in school. And then I learned that there was this teacher over there who has always been talking negatively about Christianity. Mm. And the students were always complaining about this uh, professor, but he always talked negatively. Oh. About he was, yeah, he talks negatively about that. And this has been going on. So when my daughter went to that class, that man's class, I think she couldn't take what the man was doing. He was mm -hmm. always talking negative about those people who said God here and there. And so she came to tell me, I didn't really pay much attention. Another time she came to tell me again, mommy, what is going on? I don't like it. I say, you know what? Let's go to the school. Let's go and talk about it. So we went to the principal and then we told him what was going on because I know that in America, you cannot even talk about God in glass. Right. Let alone say it something is, negative yeah. to hate both people. Mm -hmm. and so we came to the conclusion that, okay, we talked to the principal of the school and then they mm -hmm. told us to write a report. And my daughter went ahead of me and even wrote it. You see, she was, she was feeling it. Why do you have to mm. talk about my God? The God that I am mm. serving. If you don't want to worship him, that's okay. And even in America schools, you cannot even preach about God. So how dare you, teacher, yeah. always stand in front of us? So my daughter wrote a very nice report about this man, and she presented it. Mm. And the, the teacher was called. She didn't put her name, but she was, he was called. And then they interviewed him. Has this been going? Has he been doing? And this man was shocked. Mm. Because for all these years that he's been in the school, nobody challenged him. Mm -hmm. so he kept doing it. And thank God, because of the letter my daughter wrote, that man was coded and he stopped doing all these things. So I said that, I thank you very much. So you see, God has deposited so many things in us. Don't just sit down and say, okay, that's what everybody is doing, so let me also follow them. God has given us grace. He's given us something that we can also do to change the environment. And I say this to the glory of God. This prop teacher never spoke negatively about the God that we are seven. He mm. has no doubt. And this thing ended. So we have the privilege, we have the opportunity to change things, to fight again about all these things and do certain things. And then also, one thing I also want to say is we can also improve our lifestyles. Don't just mm. sit down and say that I'm just like this. So you can always do something about your life. Even okay. if your marriage is not working right, look at somebody whose marriage is right, learn something. What are you doing to keep your marriage going? You can learn something from the person. What are you doing about your education? How come that your children are doing well in school? Learn something and add it to yours. You see, there is always room for improvement. We shouldn't sit down and keep quiet. For the Lord God Almighty, he is with us and he's given us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, so that we can make a change in our environment or wherever we find ourselves, we can make a change for people to see. Amen. God bless you. Amen, God. amen, amen, amen. God bless you so much. Margaret, when you were talking, I I quite remember an episode that happened and Prophet told me, because I thought him, you know, they were out there eating and he was praying over his food. And then he was approached by, you know, somebody who was a staff member saying, why are you talking to your food? And he says, no, I'm not talking to my food. I am praying because that's why my parents have taught me that you bless God for the food that you have. You stand to me. And she says, no, you're still talking to the food. The kid said he's praying. And she says, so right there, you know that this person is trying to negate what the kid has been taught. So that is a good thing, mommy, that you were telling us, that in such a scenario, you as a parent, you intervened, and that brought a change. God bless you. I'm in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, looking at it from the NLT. And uh, it's a scripture that has been referenced, you know, in our previous episodes. That, so Christ has truly set us free. Now, make sure that you stay free 
and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. And, you know, Paul continues to talk about the circumcision and all that, but then he says that, look, we, I'm jumping to this, but by we who live by the spirit, we wait to receive by faith the righteousness of God. For we, when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there's no benefit in circumcision. There's no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. You talking about the faith of the child and that teacher is saying that, you know, those things are not even a requirement. Mama, Abigail, I'm just about to come to you and I'll come to you, Mama Debbie, as well. Looking at, you know, what Mama Margaret was saying about our faith and even being discriminated about our faith, when we are looking at the boundaries of freedom, how do we na navigate and how do we also equip our children to better stand against such, you know, shackles that are being wanted to be put on them because of the faith they identify with? First of all, you cannot give what you don't have. And as parents, we really need to be rooted in the word of God to be able to teach our children what we do. A lot of homes make it a Bible reading and studying of the word of God is optional. We haven't really brought our children and the whole family into reading the word of God and enjoying it and discussing it so that you, you sort of whet the appetite of the children to learn to be reading the word of God on their own. And that is, that is very um, serious. If we say we are Christians, if you, if you go to Deuteronomy, when God was talking to the Israelites, he said, the word of God, you hang it on your doorpost. You speak it to your children when they are going out and when they are coming in. Make sure that you have, you have sort of soaked them in the word of God in such a way that they know that they cannot go without the word of God. Right. And right. when we start doing that ourselves, we, we, right now we this world, we are too busy. We are too busy. People wake up in the morning and the first thing is their phone because there is an appointment that you have to um, uh, make sure that you meet without praying. We quickly rush, have a, a clean up ourselves. Sometimes we don't even have breakfast. We are running and then on the way to the door, we are like, God, you know everything. Please see me through today and let what kind of no we we need to we need to but you see the old biblical way what we were taught in Sunday school no prayer no no um prayer no breakfast mm -hmm. you have to read the word of God and pray and make sure that you if it means that you have to wake up an hour before time so that you'll be able to do that before you get out of your door. Please, let's make it a habit to do that. And let us teach our children to do it. And when we, we get that, you see, one Bible says that train up the child the way in which he should go. We are always saying that and that the, the bent in which that, the per that person was created is the way we should. Yes, it's true. But when you train people in certain things, I remember my big sister, when she left Ghana and she was abroad and for so many years, she was just telling us that Somewhere along the line, God had forgotten her, and therefore she had also forgotten God. One day I was talking to her. She came to visit me when I was in school in America. And I was talking to her, and she said, you know, there are certain things Mama taught us that I cannot bring myself to change for me. Mm. Because her mm. mother was a very strict Christian woman who would insist that we do certain things the Christian way. And although she felt that she, had, she was out of touch with God, she was still doing those things meticulously. So later on, to the glory of God, she accepted Christ again. She, she came back to herself and accepted Christ again and became a, a born-again Christian. You see, so let, let us, let, we are giving too much freedom to our children in the area of, um, uh, um, they, 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 they let them be who, who they really are. 
Why, why did God bring the child your way? Why did God give you that particular child? So that you put the word of God into the child and teach the child to pray. Let them know that when we, we are in need of things, let us go to the Lord in prayer. And God always proves himself faithful and um, gives them the faith to believe that, oh, when this thing happened and my parents said we should pray and we prayed about it, God really answered our prayer. And always bring them back to the word of God. Mm -hmm. And you see, it has been said that Africans, if you want to hide things from us, we put it in a book. <laughs> and my, the first time I heard it, I was like, ah, these people are insulting us. But I have come to realize that to a large extent, it is true. true. Even in the universities, in the schools, when you give assignments to people to go and read, uh -uh. they want the cook ones. So they will just go Google it and then write something for you. Instead of looking into the textbook, reading it and understanding it, paraphrasing it yourself, and then knowing, please, let us learn to read the word of God and let us teach our children to read the word of God. It is this word of God that gives us wisdom. It is this word of God that gives us direction. It is this word of God, which is the manual that God has given to us for us to live the life that we are living in. And he is our creator and he has given us the manual. And like we mentioned the other time, we, we get a phone, the manual is there, we do all sorts of things with it. And then we are just using maybe 20% of the capacity of the phone because we haven't read the manual. And because of that, we don't even know the uses of the phone that we have got for ourselves. God has put everything to the place. And so long as we read the word of God and we invite it to us and we stand on it and we pray, it is going to help us. The other thing is about holding, coming together and holding a meeting. I always bring this thing about holding a meeting with yourself. Mm -hmm. Assess, do a self-assessment and find out. So when people are saying all these things about you and they have mm. sat in a box and they have even covered the box with a lid and put a spoon on it. Very graphic, you mommy. Just sit down and assess yourself. <laughs> assess yourself and look at how you can push the mm. top over and throw the stone somewhere and get out of the box mm -hmm. and be who God has said you should be. Yes. When we start doing that and we meet with ourselves and mm. we are always going through ourselves, asking ourselves questions and comparing it with the word of God, we realize that we know who we are in Christ. Yes. It's not just about knowing who you are, but who you are in Christ. When you know who you are in Christ, you are more than victorious. And that will also help you. And then the other thing is about speaking positively to ourselves. Mm. We are too mm. negative with ourselves. There are so many things that we look at ourselves and like Mama Kosia said, I, I have told you about the story about my nose and how I had problems with my nose because everybody said I had a flat nose. And because of that, I like one, somebody, a, a, a young child met one of my children who has a nose like mine. He said, look at her and said, can you breathe? Because... He felt, it. <laughs> he, she felt the note was too flat for, uh, for she said, can you breathe? And she said, yes, I can breathe. I have no spirits and I can breathe. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, and I remember one time when my husband was doing his um, course in the UK, I visited and we went to a, a shop and a child was looking at us because in that community in Durham, they didn't have too many blacks. And the child kept looking at us, kept looking at us, kept looking at us. And the parents were very embarrassed because they realized that the child was shocked at our color. Mm. Now this child mm. came, he boldly came to our side and then came to scrape our color, I mean, at the back of our hand to see whether it would rub off. Was it dead? Was it a thing? And I just, I felt this is a child who doesn't know anything. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, but the way the mother faced the child away, and it was like, 
why are you doing that? Is gracing us in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. This is not the way to go about it. When we teach our children what the right thing is, when we say we let them see the differences, it's going to help and it's going to sort of sort out some of these issues. But because if we don't do that, the world is out there to teach them the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Are we going to allow them to embrace the differences out there through the eyes of the people who have got it wrong? Or are we going to help them come out with the right view about things? Mm -hmm. I'm so glad about what Maggie said about what she did with her child because that was the right way to go about it. This has taught the child a lesson. It has also taught the, the teacher a lesson. Let us teach our children mm -hmm. to lightly assert mm -hmm. it. To lightly assert it. Know who they are and mm -hmm. stand up for what they are supposed to be. May God help us all. Amen. 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 Um, before I'll come to you for your thoughts in regards to how to conquer this and also the boundaries of freedom. We have a comment here um, um, from what Mother Maggie said. Our uh, elders said, know your rights as you live in the U.S. Know your rights as a Christian before the old mm -hmm. serpent. Know your rights as a member of the Church of Pentecost. Know your rights at your workplace. Know your rights as a wife and as a husband. Know your rights, please. Mm -hmm. The only professor, Kwame Nketia. So please go into Mommy Baby. <laughs> The way yeah. and also, also how you know the boundaries and our freedom. Um, please. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Our mommies have really spoken, and and some of my points they have really expounded it. Actually, you know, and like you said, in Christ we are new creatures. All things are passed away, and everything has become new. And then in our communities and in our societies. We have to show who we really are. For me, that is what I believe. We have to, we have good qualities in us. And we are, we are human beings. We have a caring nature. We are loving. So when we go to places where we are being treated as if we are secondary, we have to let them know that we know. Actually, sometimes, you know, the people will even know that you know better than they do. Uh -huh. Because even in their evil behaviors and their evil deeds, you rise beyond that. Let us rise above. Seriously, Christ is calling us to rise above. Because sometimes I wonder, I, I would, we would have a discussion and I would tell my husband, I said, you know, these people, there are quite a lot of people who brought Christianity to Africa, yet they didn't know the God they were serving. Mm. And we, mm. who it has come and fallen on our lap, we have to let them know. If, if they knew that God is love, truly love, and all men are equal, they would have treated better. Because they came with the Bible in one hand, and then they came mm. and went to slavery with another. Which means deep down, they didn't know the God they are serving. So let us... Yeah. Let us not follow what they are doing by manipulating ourselves, our own brothers and sisters, and doing things that they did, and even worse. Let us prove that we know the God we serve. After all, our God, he said he's a faithful God. Mm -hmm. So if you live for him, as mommy was saying, if you serve him, and if he allows you to prove your worth, the people may not like you, but they'll know this man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm there is something extraordinary in them. I remember we were transferred to a place and normally when we are transferred to a place, no matter how difficult the place is, what I do is that I Google and do my research. I find out what things the children can be able to be involved in. I know when the children are involved in something, it also keeps my heart at peace a little bit. So we, were, we sent our children looking at the area where we were. The school, they said it was um, uh, ESL. Hey, we don't even have money. How can we be able to put our children in a private school in that place? Mm. But 70% of the, of, the, of the class, the school is ESL. So you know, we have to force ourselves and we had to take our children to this almost all white school. Hey, 
we went there and then these people started you know and then they started behaving oh our children are from Toronto and their behavior Toronto they know how the the, the black kids are and all that and I'm saying ah my children are mm. and it's a Christian school you know Christian my school goodness. and I said my children are children who know the Lord and their, their parents are Christian parents. So what I did was I started talking to them. And like Ma Bigel said, we do have the devotions, we have the Bible study. And then I started advising them on top of them that I said, you know what? And I added it. I said, you are Engmans. Engmans, mm. apart from being children of God, the family you come from, we know how to behave. We know how to comport ourselves, even in spite of mm. all different. So behave yourself as such. And then what happened was that there were some children who were struggling, who didn't have uh, help. So what I did was that after school, I would sit down with them and then I started uh, helping the children. And then before you know it, all other children whose parents they were waiting for their parents came and sat around us. They all started doing their homework. The next thing I know, the school decided that they want to do after school program. And beloved, do you know mm. what ended up happening? I was there one day when they mm. called me and they said the, their board of directors, they wanted to add me to the board of directors. This is a multi-million mm. dollar uh, school. They wow. added me to the Very board of directors. Then, yeah, within less than six months, I was transferred to Guyana. Ow! <laughs> 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 yeah, but, but do you know what God did because of that? Mm. I tell you, sometimes when I, I, I remember what the Lord has done, within mm. one year, my children, who, the people they were living with, the person became sick, and then they left mm. my children alone. I was in Guyana. My children were all alone, three boys. Do you know what the school did? I tell you, the school decided that because I was in missions, the principal told me, he said, connect with the teachers and let the teachers, they will send you emails. Anything that is going on, they will send you emails so that you can be able to work and then we'll make sure that your children graduate. Mm. By the grace of God, this is mm. what they did and both the children who were left there were able to graduate. I'm saying mm. that, why? It is because even though they had a mindset that blacks, we are this and this and that. We proved our way. And because of that, they also rose up and they were also a help. So beloved, sometimes God allows mm -hmm. us to go through certain challenges. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, he, he went through suffering and we don't expect to be greater than our master. Mm -hmm. But when the suffering comes, how do we comport ourselves? How do we prove that we are children of the mm. most high God. Like mommy said, we have to let the word dwell in us richly. And I, I would say one thing I've learned from Ma is that talking to yourself, you know, talking to yourself. My husband does that and first I used to wonder, ah, what is wrong with him? How come he talks to himself? But he said, when you reason with yourself, <laughs> it allows you uh -huh. to be able to make certain decisions. Mm. And when you are making the decisions, you know you are doing it. So now I've started copying, you know, I've started picking up that. <laughs> and I find that curious. <laughs> yeah, and it is a help to me. It is mm. a help to me. I was telling somebody just recently, I said, I want to go deeper into the Lord. And he said, mommy, mm. but you are deep. I said, no, I'm not deep. Oh. I want mm. to, uh, Apostle Paul said that I may know him. Mm. I want to go in the power of his resolution, the fellowship of his, you see, we don't have that one, the first, no, no, no suffering for us, so. no suffering for us, so may God help us that wherever we find ourselves, sometimes I'll ask myself, God, why me, why am I going through all this suffering, but yes, if it is not you, who is it, so that God will reflect his glory through us, and then other people, they may not let us know that we have changed them, but mm. God will use us to be a change in the life of others. Amen. 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 Very, very profound, Mommy. And I just want to club to you. You said something that really resonated with me. You talking about 
we the angmans, we are like this, we are like that. And I think it's, it's very profound and very powerful to have an identity as a family that you are proud to really say to your children. And that's very, very wonderful. And thank you so much for sharing this personal experience that you had with us it's very touching and the outcome of it I, I mean I love one thing you said you said even if this is the notion out there we have an obligation to show that we know our worth and you say we talk to ourselves you know sometimes I talk to myself and I call myself the day of the week that I was born and I'm I'm a and I say, I'm a, no matter what anybody says, you are blessed and you're highly favored. And I don't like people who are always saying everybody's against them, that we speak good to ourselves because the world will push you down. The world will try to, the very things you like about yourself is what people will try to use against you. So mommy, that really resonated with me. Thank you so much. And for people who are out there, you don't need anybody else to tell you your worth. Bible says that God has fearfully and wonderfully made us. And so what you like about yourself, you need to emphasize it for you. And that which other people have a problem with, if you like it, you do love it and you have to encourage yourself. Mommy, God bless you so much. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. First thing, Henrietta, back to you. God bless you. Uh, Mommy Doris, please, if you could also weigh in on that. But I wanted to, I, I had a, a question, I guess, from um, our, our contributions. A lot of times, especially for the younger generations, we always use, I know my rights, I know my rights. Right. And so, <laughs> and the church always say, I know my rights, but no good also. So, um, <laughs> the younger generation, even as we're talking about the boundaries to our freedom, um, please, Mama Doris, if you can also weigh in on that for us as well. Okay. Knowing your rights is not a wrong thing. But when you are using it to do something that is not good, then it is not a good thing that God will want us to accept, like um, you are a child and you are doing something wrong and your parents are trying to tell you the right thing and you say, I am 18 and I know my rights. Mm -hmm. And you know that the rights, you are using your rights wrongly based on the word of God, then God won't be happy with you. I don't see anything wrong with somebody knowing his or her rights. When you know your rights, you can do the right thing. If you know your rights, you do the right thing. You go far, you have that confidence, and you know that this thing that I'm doing, nobody will question me because I know my rights and I'm using the rights to do the right thing. Okay, right. so if they know their rights, they, they should let us see that they know their rights and they are using their rights to do the right thing at the right time at the right place. Then we wouldn't have any problem with them. But if they are right, they are using it wrongly, then we'll come, we'll come and talk to them so that they will not miss their way. And as we, we the boundaries as to what we should do to our children. Yesterday, myself and our apostle, we experienced a very sad um, moment. After church, we went to visit um, my mother-in-law and as we were about to enter the gate, there was this young lad. He will be around nine years. Mm -hmm. He ran to us and he said, we should change our ways and we should stop fornicating, all those things. And then he said, um, he said, um, we, uh, if you're a woman and you wear earrings, you should stop it. And so I became so curious and I, I, I stood and I said, who, who told you that? He said, yes, it's in the Bible. Now, I said, which quotation? That he quoted Ezekiel 7. And I have been reading Ezekiel. So I knew when he said Ezekiel 7, I understood where he was coming from. But this is a young guy. You could see that he's entered a church and they've told him so many wonderful things that is swinging this boy. And I had so much pity on this boy, trying to tell him the right thing that is only through Jesus Christ. And that the thing that he's talking about is not the biblical truth. And this boy wouldn't let me be. Then he went on to ask us, which do we attend? He said, we told him the church. He said, oh, our founder is even crying. I said, we don't worship the dead. We worship the living God. Why am I emphasizing on this one? If we don't teach our children, somebody else will teach them the wrong thing. 
And you can definitely see that this young lad has a church where they are giving them false doctrine. All that they are dwelling on is on this, do this, don't do this. Thank God that Saturday, our morning devotion, we read Colossians 2. Apostle took time, explained vividly, giving the background and all those things to our children. So when we sat in the car, Apostle said, ah, I'm so happy I taught my kids this thing this morning. And look at what this boy is saying. Beloved, if we don't get time for our children, people will get time for them. Mm-hmm. And they will teach them the wrong thing. And once they teach them the wrong thing, they, I, I, sometimes I wonder, I ask myself that once when we are telling our children certain things, they don't believe it and they believe what others are telling them. Mm-hmm. There are so many things going on around in this world, but we should let our children know the God that we are worshiping. And the God that we are worshiping can only be found in the Bible. So we should have time and read and pray with them, teach them. When they have questions that are uh, mind-blowing, have time. Don't be annoyed with them. Explain things to them. Let them know our stand, that this is what we believe in, so that nobody will take it from them. I like King David. David was a young guy who was always on the field with the sheep, the cattle, the cattle. And David built an experience. He built a strong relationship with the God of Israel. So in his own testimony, he said that I am I'm, I'm always with the sheep. And when a, a, a bear comes to take any of them, I open the mouth of them and I take it of them. So when he came to the field where Goliath, was just cursing the God of Israel. He knew that this God of Israel is a potent and an active and a strong God who can deliver them. Despite the negative things and the things that were preventing him to face Goliath, he relied on the God that he knows. So we should rely on the God that we know. We should rely on him. What is the word of God saying? Are we ourselves going by the word of God? You see, that is the problem. If we are Christians ourselves, our children will be Christians because they will learn from us. So we, the parents, should sit down, do correct self-assessment and know where we are not doing right. How many times uh, will your children see you pray? How many times? Be sincere. And how many times will they see you on the phone talking about this one? We finish, you talk about this one, it's me, you talk about it. Meanwhile, you don't have time to pray. When they see that you are a prayer woman, your children will automatically become prayer warriors. Okay. So we are the only models that they know. So everything that we are doing at home will point out or will come, it will go a long way to show who they will be in the future. So if David didn't allow the negative things that was said about him by his brothers and the, the, the pushing him to go there, but he was ready to fight because he had somebody inside him. We should build up our children in the word of God. Amen. Find time and pray with them. Pray with them individually. Pray with them anytime you get, if, if, if in it's five minutes, when they come to you with problem, hold their hands. Pray into their life. Tell them things that are very positive. Let them know what we believe in. You see, this guy has used Ezekiel 7 and 19 to say that because of that. And that was not what God was saying. God was saying a different thing altogether. But this is what somebody has told this nine-year-old boy. And he has the passion. with, And he wouldn't listen to anybody. All that he wants to do is to tell us about what he knows. So we should make sure that our children are well grounded in the word of God. And by our lives, they should know that it pays to be good Christians. And if we do that, our children will never go wayward and they will stay within the boundaries where God's love will find them. And we should know that once we are Christians, it doesn't make our children automatic Christians. No. And we should also know that once we take them to church and because they've gone to Sunday school, they've 
graduated and uh, in the adult service, they are Christians. No, let them know Christ for themselves. Let them have personal relationship with Christ. And you, the mother who is always, at, should be a mother, the parent, both mother and father should be a model for them and make sure our children really, really have that connection with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If we do that, then we have a future. But if we don't and we allow them to go, to force them to church and do all those things that they are not willing with their rights and their wrongs and other things, then we don't have any future. We pray that God will help us to realize this and bring it up. And he will water it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Mommy Doris. And as you and Mommy Abigail were saying, I think Mommy Abigail said that, you know, you can't give what you don't have. And so as the children of God, as believers, we ourselves should have Christ in us to be able to deliver Christ to someone else, especially our children. And at times, you know, you have uh, parents who always teach their child, do as I say, and not as I do. But no, we are encouraging our mothers that, that we shouldn't do as I say, and do as I say, and not as I do. No, but we should live an example. As Paul lived an example that he was able to confidently say that, look at me as I imitate Christ. We too should also imitate Christ in our homes. God bless you so much. Uh, Mommy, uh, Margaret, please, if you would also like to weigh in on the boundaries of our freedom when it comes to being shackled or unshackled. Hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, there are boundaries to our freedom, but it all depends on us. You see, just like our mother was saying, all things are lawful. In 1 Corinthians 10, 23, the Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things can build us up. Mm. So sometimes we have to be very careful mm -hmm. what we do, what we see, and what we say. Ask yourself, what I'm doing is it in line with the word of God? Does it please the Lord? Maybe you may be living in this country. Maybe it is accepted. Maybe if a child is 18 years, he accepted it. If you can have a boyfriend, sleep, do whatever. But is that what the Bible teaches us? Do we have to, to allow our children to do the same thing? Is it right? Is it acceptable? So we always have to go according to the word of God. And don't, we shouldn't pay too much. Well, this is my belief and this is my perception. It is not about what is out there, but it is what the word of God says that I go by and not what people are telling me. So anything that has no connection with the word of God or anything that has no bearing so far as the word of God I think I will not go there mm -hmm. I won't do it it doesn't matter what the world will tell me or what the world will do but I have to go according to the word of God because after all at the end of the day it is my Lord Jesus Christ that I'm trying to imitate and not my boss or whoever or whatever you see God can use so many people to direct us to teach us but at the end of the day, go back to the word of God. Is it in line with what the word of God is saying? Is it right? Is it what God wants me to do? And then go the, the, that way. And then also the same thing with our homes, our children, our families. Mm. Let us try to build them with the word of God. It is easy mm -hmm. to go out there, tell people, children, what they should do. But your own children... What are you telling them? What are you doing with them? You see, as human beings, it is very easy. We can be hypocrites out there. You can go preach all the preachings you know at church. But when it comes mm -hmm. to your own closet, what are you doing there? Yes. We can go yes. out there and talk to people about their marriages here and there. Da, 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 da. What about your man, your husband that you are living with? Are you giving him the, all the respect that he needs in the house? Mm. It is easier said than done and please those of us who are listening to us and all of us on the panel you see we cannot deceive god nobody can deceive god no matter how much you pretend pretend let me tell you one day you'll be exposed whether you know it or you don't know whether you like it or you don't like one day 
There is a day called one day, one day you'll be exposed. So I want to encourage everybody. The word of God is our everything. It is easy to lie. That may be fact. That may be, be. it is easy to tell lies. It is easy to, 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 to say things we, we, we don't do. But what is the word of God? At the end of the day, we cannot cheat on the Holy Ghost. He knows what is within us. He knows what we are doing. He knows what we are saying. He knows what we are preaching. He knows what we are out there telling people. What about? Let charity begin at home. Amen, amen, amen. I think Ananias and Sapphira would tell us you can lie to the Holy Ghost. So, mommy, when you <laughs> when you were talking, I was like, hmm. We, God has been merciful and gracious to us, you know. People preaching about love, and then <laughs> things are happening. People <laughs> preaching, yeah, and and God willing, next week, you know, we'll be talking about love, the practicality of it. So, <laughs> mommy, you are right there in tune with us. So, so, I love you in the love of the Lord, and then. And things are happening. <laughs> mercy, mercy, mercy. We want to acknowledge our people. You are with us on today's Human COP USA Radio. Thank you for being here with us. Love us, like us, share, share our link. Let it be a blessing. We have so many comments here, and we want to acknowledge all our people. I see we are going to drum roll. Apostle SK Arthur reaching ahead for Texas region is here. Apostle, thank you so much for spending the time with us and love to our mama Mary Arthur. God bless you so much auntie josephine amagache she says amen thank you for being here with us and also i see nana t serve what's there he says thank you all for your wonderful and insightful contributions we as christians need to learn to love always and not pick and choose when to love may god bless us all amen 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 and i see also auntie esther chalmers Thank you, mommy, is what she said. We are sorry for your loss. Our condolences to you. Auntie Mercy Dunkwa is here. She says, God bless you, wonderful mothers. And Auntie Nanako, she is always here with us. We love you, dear. And she says, God bless you, Mama Maggie. Auntie Linda Yadam, thank you for being here with us. Auntie Anastina Taylor, thank you for being here with us. We appreciate you. Auntie Helen Bruni, you are always here with us. Thank you for being here. Like us, love us, share share the link and let it be a blessing and all of you we appreciate you so many other comments we'll keep reading them as we go along i see my jerry sweetheart has this to say says thank you momo doris we really have work to do in the body of christ to make sure that all races are welcome even here some churches are labeled black or african american church white etc i pray that we will not repeat these mistakes as we possess the nations the gospel is colorless and so must the fellowship it promotes god bless you all thank you so much first lady henrietta god bless you god bless you now i want us to take the scripture from uh, john chapter 8 verse 35 and 36 as we are beginning to discuss we've talked about being shackled in so many different dimensions we've talked about how to overcome being shackled we talked about how to um to you know know when we're shackled and now we're going to dig into the benefits of this freedom when we are unshackled and we are set free and i want to take read from john chapter chapter 8 verse 35 to 36 it reads and a slave does not abide in the house forever but a son abides forever. And verse 36 says, therefore, if a son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And I'd like to start with our mother Eggman. Um, as we talk about the benefits of our freedom, as we as children of God have become unshackled, what are the benefits of such freedom? Oh, thank you so very much. The benefits are so huge. You become free. And as they said, you become free indeed. You become free mm. spiritually, yeah. physically you are free, psychologically, emotionally, you know, uh, you are free. And, and that is, I think, the main attainment of every human being. Mm. Every human being's desire is to be free. Because sometimes we are free physically, but mentally and psychologically we are chained. And because of that, we are walking. Somebody will say we are existing, but we are not living. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, but but Christ wants us to live in the fullness of Him, and and as for that, it's it's an ongoing, ongoing situation. Mm -hmm. I would frankly say, for me personally, this is how I see it. Even though the Word of God has said it, and that is what it is, it takes for me to accept it and to allow that Word to dwell in my heart and in my spirit, so that I will walk in that liberty. Mm. Uh, but many a times when issues come, sometimes it seems like everything is fine. I am free, I'm free indeed, I'll sing. I'm a new creation, all things are passed away. Wait till the problem comes. And then immediately I start reverting verting back to the old shackles. I was reading something very interesting yesterday and the person was saying that sometimes we even pigeonhole Christ. Mm -hmm. And as somebody was saying, what does it mean to pigeonhole him? You know, when he went to his own people, yeah. <laughs> they put him in that box. And then they said, yeah. ah, is this the same Jesus, the Capitan's boy that we know? <laughs> and so because of that pigeonholing, he wasn't able to perform a lot of miracles there. So then Interesting I turned, analogy, mommy. Yeah, <laughs> and then so I turned and I asked myself, when that happens, now with me talking to myself as I'm learning from mom, I, I asked myself, I said, do I pigeonhole Christ? Mm. Sometimes when there is an issue and I need a miracle, do I just assume, oh, maybe the doctors are there, so the doctors will give me medication, or do I really trust in him? So mm. may God help us so mm. that we will be free. We will just accept it, and we will not mm. categorize and try and, you know, uh, 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 put things, uh, departmentalize things. But we will just accept the freedom Christ has given unto us. And we will walk in that freedom so that it will be a blessing and a benefit to us. Amen. 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 And, you know, we look at the time and the time is far spent. The discussion has been so great that we have a little bit time left. And so even as we are going through our, uh, the last section of our, our discussion, um, we're going to also go through our closing remarks. So to back to Mommy Debbie, if you have any closing remarks, um, for our audience of those listening, as we are gearing towards the end of this wonderful discussion, please. Um, okay. Thank you. All right. I'll say thank you so very much. I mean, this has been an eye opener for me. Normally, I would like we are saying we should look at ourselves first. Mm -hmm. It has been an eye opener for me. It has mm -hmm. raised so many questions in my life. You know, I see that, you know, I am free, but yet looking at this topic and looking at my life, I know, no, there are certain shackles and it is only the Lord mm. who will be able to make that difference so that I will recognize, I will accept his word as it is, even when troubles come and it's so difficult. Uh, uh, King David mm. said, why are you downcast, oh my soul? Rejoice in the Lord. So I will rejoice Hallelujah. in the Lord. Yeah, it is just by his grace. Now I fully understand why mm. my husband told me when I was in Guyana that why are you afraid? If you live, you live for him. If you die, you die unto him. May it settle in my spirit. And anyone else who is on the line, may we know that we are loved. We are in the very best of hands so that we will open ourselves up to the Lord and he will set us free indeed. God bless us. God Amen. bless you. God bless you. God bless Amen. you. Please, mommy, uh, Margaret, please give us some benefits of this freedom in which we are talking about and also give us your closing remarks. Yes, I think by the grace of God, there are so many benefits when it comes to our freedom. Freedom is very good. Freedom is very mm -hmm. important. Freedom gives you the opportunity to do what you have to do for the Lord. And there are so many things we can do when we have our freedom. Just like mm -hmm. our mother said, we need freedom in every area of our lives, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, psychological. We want to be free, for that is what the Bible says. Yes. So when you are free, you have the ability to do whatever you want to do. You can fulfill life destiny. You can reach your goal. You can live a victorious Christian life. You can also make great impact in your world. Mm -hmm. For the Bible says lack of knowledge my people may perish. Right. When you don't have that knowledge, you may perish in so many things. But again, I also want to say, it is only the things of God that you can have too much. 
But sometimes too, too much freedom can be disaster. Mm. <laughs> yes, too much freedom. For example, if you are in, if you think you can sleep, 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 sleep all day and not do anything, it is too bad. No, you have the freedom to sleep. But if you sleep, 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 too much sleep is not good. So there are certain things, it is not good to have too much freedom. But so far as the things of God are concerned, we are praying that we'll have more of the things of God and then we'll do away with the things in the world that does not really help us. Mm -hmm. And then I pray that may the Lord give us the grace to use all the gifts, the abilities that he's given us so that we can use them to the glory of his name, especially when it comes to our freedom. Because sometimes when you are not free, you, you, you will not even recognize what God has given you. You will not even use your, your giftings mm -hmm. to help others because you yourself you are in bondage. Yeah. See, when you are sick, how can you go and minister heal, healing to somebody? When you yourself you are sick, how can you go out there and minister healing? When you yourself, right now, the, the, our theme for the year is go and possess the nation. If you have not possessed your own self, if you have not possessed your home, your family, your children, how do you go out there possessing people? You are just faking. You are a hypocrite. You are just creating confusion out there. Mommy, did you call us out or call them out? Somebody said, if you can't say you called them out. So did you call all of us out? <laughs> is it, is it? So it is something that we really have to think think about it very well and not just go out there mm -hmm. just saying anything, but we have to think and think twice. So what I want to leave with my listeners for today is we need to pray for freedom. Freedom is very good. Freedom is very important. And looking at our background, where we are coming, a lot of our chains come from our foundation. So mm -hmm. let us go back to our foundation, where we are coming from where we were born, where we were planted, where we were nurtured, and ask the Lord to set us free. Because when your foundation is destroyed, what can you do as a Christian? So I pray that the Lord God Almighty will have mercy. Amen. Look at the areas where we are in bondage and he himself will liberate us. Because sometimes you may even not know you are in bondage. You may not even understand the scope of your bondage. But it takes the grace of God for him to locate where your bondage is so that he can set you free. May the Lord God Almighty bless us and be with us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please, our uh, Romy Doris, if you can please weigh in on the benefits of um, our freedom and then also give our closing remarks. Like, give us your closing remarks as we Mommy Doris, please, you're, you're muted. Mommy, please, you're muted. Yes. Please, you're on mute. You're muted. Yes, please. No, please. Okay. There you go. Am I okay? Yes, mommy. You're great. Yes, mommy. Okay. So somebody said freedom is the oxygen of the soul. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you are free, mm -hmm. you can breathe. Let me mm -hmm. give this testimony. When we were we went for missions for five years and uh, I stayed there for about two years. I had not come to Ghana. So one day we decided to drive five days to Ghana. And it was so hectic. Mm. I was yearning to just enter into Ghana. So when mm -hmm. we got to the border between Ghana and Burkina Faso, there was an issue. So they made us stop. I just, I just got down from the car and I started walking towards the border of Ghana. 
At a point, I was running. I, was, I, I didn't even know. I, I wanted to be free. I wanted to enter into Ghana. And I, 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 when I entered into the borders of Ghana at Hamley, I just mm -hmm. sat on a chair and I started crying. Oh. I cried and I, I was so, I was so happy. Hey, so now I'm in Ghana. Is that what freedom means? Hmm. I <laughs> cried till the, the, the officers at the, <laughs> at the uh, distant border took me inside. They wanted to know if my husband was beating me or I was going to, I said, nothing <laughs> of that sort. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, they sent for my husband and when he came I was crying he was just looking at he didn't know what to say then he asked them, what is wrong I said I can't explain the joy I, I can't the ecstasy that I'm having I'm so happy I'm back beloved mm -hmm. if anybody is in any shackles I pray in the name of Jesus Amen. that the God of Jacob the hand mm. of the God of Jacob will release that person. Amen. Because you cannot compare anything to freedom. Mm. Freedom is freedom. You are free to do all that you have to do. So mm. you, you, you become so fulfilled and you can continue with your destiny. Anything mm. that God has purported for your life, with this freedom, you can achieve it. You can mm. move around and do everything that you want to do, not fearing intimidation or comment or anything. Mm. And it's without any obstacle. I mean, you'll be on top of the world. This, uh, 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 this guy at uh, John 5, when Peter and John got there and they said, silver and gold, we have not. But this is what we have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and the bible says instantly he rose and he walked started jumping moving up and down <laughs> this is liberty yes. mm. this is real liberty because now he can do his he always see people moving in and out of the church but because he's the cripple he mm. was limited he couldn't even go through the beautiful gate but the day down the lord liberated him he went in there jumping around for people to even recognize that ah isn't it this guy who used to sit here said i am the one i'll be healed so there is nothing like liberation freedom mm -hmm. forever everything that is um, coming against us whether it is their diseases stagnation anything god should just liberate us and i know if you read ezekiel 34 27 and 28 God was promising the Israelites when they had been in bondage for a long time. Then God said, you will live in safety and abundance yeah. and peace. I pray that everybody who is watching us today will live in safety, will live in yeah. abundance, and will yeah. live with peace. That everything that is holding us down, God himself will liberate us. So that our joy in him will be full. Then we can boldly say that he who the son has set free shall be free indeed. May God bless us all. Amen. 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 And before we go to our mommy, Abby, yeah. we're going to acknowledge a few people who are listening. Um, may God bless you all for joining us this afternoon or for some of us in the evening. And we have um, our Auntie Nanati saying thank you all for your wonderful and insightful contributions. We as Christians need to learn, love always, and not to pick and choose who we love. May God bless you all. I have my very own special mother-in-law joining us. My God bless you for joining. We have our Auntie Mercy on the line uh, on, and she says, may God bless you wonderful mothers. May God bless you as well. Um, we have our, our sister Nana Kosia Sampuma also saying, God bless you, Mama Maggie. Uh, may God bless you as well. We have our sister Mary Amiel saying amen and our sister Esther also on. May God bless you all for joining us this wonderful afternoon and evening for some. And we were going to give it to our mother Abigail as she gives us um, her closing remarks and also discusses the benefits 
of this wonderful freedom. Thank you all so much. Um, Galatians 5, 1, that we have referred to in the beginning, I go back to it. It says, for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand mm -hmm. firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. And then when it comes to verse 18, it says that if you are led by the Spirit, yes. you are not under the law. It is when you are under a yoke that you do not see the freedom in which you are. You are suffocated, you feel hemmed in, you don't know what to do, and you feel like you cannot get yourself out to do who you want to do. But the benefits of freedom, I will sum them all up in the fruit of the Spirit. Mm. It says the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5.20, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the spirit, let us also keep in step with the spirit. Let us not become conceited to walk in one another and doing one another. You see, when you are free, you are so with yourself. You are not struggling to be like somebody. You are not envious of what somebody is doing and thinking the other person is better than you. You are you are just content. That is something about freedom. There's contentment and you can breathe easily. Like Mama Kosia was saying when she got to Hamilton, and she, there are so many times I've traveled out of the country and I'm like, how am I supposed to be doing this and doing that? In my country, I know my left from my right. And I know the things to do that nobody is going to question. You go to some other places and why are you walking here? Why are you stepping here? Let me come back. <laughs> and where Mercy. I know how to put my foot, uh, one foot ahead of the other, and then just keep walking without getting into trouble. So the, the, the benefits of freedom, mm. is, you see that you are emanating the peace of God. People see you and you are radiating Christ. You are happy within mm. yourself. You are content. You don't have anything to worry about because you are working in faith in Christ mm. and you know that the <laughs> God that you, you are serving. Amen. Amen. And I am I'm radiating in the love <laughs> and the peace of my God. So that is what um, the, the benefits we get from the freedom. But like everything that we have discussed, discussed what I want us to take home with that is that freedom without boundaries can lead you to disaster. Freedom without boundaries can lead, lead you to disaster. And the, the boundaries that we set in our freedom is found in the word of God. If we, we use the word of God as a yardstick, it will tell us that, yes, you are free, all right. But this is a no-go area because if you go on in that way, it is going to lead you to destruction. That is why when we have our children at home, they are at liberty to do so many things in the house. But when your child is going out and you don't tell your child that within a certain period, you are supposed to come back. And then you just leave the child to go and stay for as long as you, he or she likes and comes back at 12 midnight, 1 a.m. Is that freedom? Is that the type of freedom that is, is good enough for the child. No, the freedom must come with boundaries and the boundaries must be set, set in the wisdom of God in his word. When we have the wisdom of God directing us, we will be able to do the right thing. Solomon had the freedom to be himself. He was the king of Israel. He had everything at his beck and call. He decided to, in all, get a thousand concubines and wives. And look, at what good it, it, it landed him in. So 
freedom mm -hmm. without boundaries is disaster. So we need to go according to the word of God to get our freedom. And when we have our freedom with the boundaries set by mm -hmm. our loving God, who is protecting us and, and keeping us from falling into disaster, we then enjoy the fruit of the spirit and we are content within ourselves. We keep smiling on earth. We enjoy our everyday Christian life. So he calls us home to his blessed place where there will be no sorrows or tears and where our freedom will even be more everlasting. Amen. 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 May God bless you all. Um, our mothers, mommy. Eggman, Mommy Maggie, Mommy Doris, Mommy Abigail, and especially our, our host, the host with the most, our mother gift. May God bless you. May God bless you all for us. Um, this is once again today's woman. Please, please, please don't forget to share the link. Even after the show, share the link. It will be a blessing to someone else. At this time, I'll hand it over to our mother gifty for any closing remarks. And may God richly, richly bless you all. Amen, amen. Wonderful. First thing, Harrietta, God bless you so much. You've been phenomenal. Auntie Anastina Taylor, she says, God bless you. Or Auntie Nanako, she says, God bless you all, mummies. Auntie Esther Chalmers, she says, amen. Auntie Maria Mayo says, amen. I see my dearest mom, my biological mom. I have so many mothers, but my biological mom is on. Mom Margaret as on. Mommy, love you. God bless you. My dearest, dearest husband is on there too. God bless you, sir. And I see my regional mama, one of my mothers as well. Mama Margaret, I fear she is on. And she's always sharing for us. Mommy, God bless you. And you know, when I was coming to Ghana, mommy says, Delays, no quite not your couple like so when I'm coming back, I'm gonna come back with a special style. So Mama mm. Margaret, I really appreciate <laughs> you. And you know, the time has been wonderful. Mothers, God bless you once again. Mama we go, we are about to get ready, please, to ask you to pray for us. And even as we are praying, we want to remember all the families that are in mourning. So many families are still in mourning. So much has happened over the weekend. We were with Mama Edith, even as you know, we were putting um, Pastor Matthew's mother to rest and also uh, remembering Pastor Matthew himself and so many people that are going through losses. First Lady Henrietta also told me there was a loss in her family as well. So many people. Mama Abigail, if you could please, uh, even as we are praying for freedom, also remember. And Elder Sam is not at the studio. We just appreciate you for all that you do. Mama Abigail, please. I will pray. Our Heavenly Father, once again, we are grateful to you for a time like this. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for everything you have taught us today. We have learned at your feet, and you have spoken to us and through us. Thank you so much that, Lord, you came to die on the cross for us so that you would buy our freedom for us. We are praying at this time that anybody who has been shackled in any way Lord, whether it is emotional, whether it is spiritual, whether it is physical, whatever kind of shackles that anybody is in. Father, as we are praying, we are praying for your mighty hand to be upon all such people. And Lord, we declare your freedom into their lives that, Lord, every shackle will be broken and Lord, your children will rise up in freedom. We are praying, Father, that you will put in us the love for your word, so that we will use your light, your, your word as a lamp unto our feet to show us direction, to give us the boundaries that we are supposed to walk in, so that we will enjoy the freedom that you have given us, even as we live on this earth. We are praying if there is anybody who is crying, who is weeping because of some shackles that this world has put him or her in, Father, break through the shackles. And Lord, let your freedom prevail in all of us. We have learned at your feet how we should be free and teach our children also to be free. Father, help us. Give us the grace, the ability. And Lord, give us the wisdom to go on and teach our children so that all the prejudices that we are holding will not be passed on to our children in the next generation, but they will be broken and your love will embrace each and every one of us as we share the Christian love and we enjoy the freedom you have given us. Thank you so much. 
At this time, we are praying, Lord, for everybody who is mourning. We bring our Mama Edith into your hands, Lord. You are the only one who can wipe her tears. We bring our Mama Regina Kofi into your hands. Father, you are the only one who can embrace her. And Lord, take her out of what she's going through. We are praying for every, every person who is mourning. Father, wipe her tears. Embrace us in your love. Put us on your chest. And Lord, wipe away every fear that we are going through. And Lord, give us your peace within so that we'll be able to face the rest of the life that is ahead of all of us. Even as we mourn, Lord, we will be mourning in you, taking our comfort from you. Holy Spirit, you were left behind to comfort us. Please let your comfort flow into every mourning heart. And Lord, let your peace fill all of us as we support people who are mourning and as we help to wipe away tears. Let us also, Lord, enjoy your comfort and your peace. We are asking all this. In the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. 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 Momo Doris, God bless you. Momo Abigail, God bless you. First lady and reader, you did a phenomenal job. Kudos to you. You've been fantastic. Thank you, thank you, and God bless you. We clap for you. You did a great. We clap for you. Good job. When I come, I owe you a crate of eggs. You know, <laughs> <laughs> growing up, and so you deserve a crate of eggs and then aquaco. You know, so I'll bring you down aquaco. I hide it in my purse and we can get to you all the way. But thank you so much, our mothers. God will next week we're going to talk about love and we are looking at practicality of love we talk about the lovable and unlovable if there'll be any such thing so it's going to be fun it's going to be interesting lovable and unlovable we'll find out who are the unlovable and who are the lovable people all right please have a blessed night it's uh almost oh, 10 over here so i'm in a different time zone 9 15 p.m from the clock that I can see. It's nighttime here and I'm about to hit the bedroom. But for you who are enjoying daytime, enjoy your daytime. I have some low drink waiting for me and some ataje. I'm not joking out hey. here. I'm enjoying it. Hey. <laughs> you are really in Ghana. <laughs> I am in Ghana. And of course, I have some live soup right there. It's a <laughs> dry fish. So I'm not joking. But have a pleasant night. And thank you all. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, I'm making my mind. My mind. My mind. My mind. My mind. My Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Mama Magic and later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I finish, yeah. I'll use my Yeridia sword. Yeah. It's so good. Hey. <laughs> I wish I had it. You wish you were there. <laughs> all right. Have a blessed night. Thank okay, you all. You bye. Yeah, bye. 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 bye.